Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis by mailing in a donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers, the original air date, January 14th, 1951, and the title is Death in the Cards. The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Death in the Cards. It is 11.30 p.m. on the night of January 26, 1947, at the ranch house of Chester Gentry in Reeves County, Texas. Chester is on the telephone as his stepson, Will, hey, enters. Man. No sign of him, huh? All right. Call me when you find him. Thanks, Sheriff. Where you been, Will? Just out having a beer. That Sheriff Bennett you're talking to? Yeah. Your friend Tovich telephoned you a while ago. Tovich? Oh. You didn't tell the sheriff about Tobich. I sure did. The sheriff just called to say he located Tobich's rooming house over in Biggestown, but Tobich wasn't there. But I've told you a hundred times it's the worst thing in the world you could do. Tobich finds out to kill me. Will, I... Maybe he has found out you told the sheriff. Maybe he's on his way here right now to get me. Look, you've got to give me the money to pay him off now. No, Will. No more money. Do you know what you're saying? He'll kill me if I don't pay him. He told me so. Now you listen to me, Will. I've reached the end of my rope in this whole rotten mess. I'm through. You're not going to get another dime from me. I've done everything I can for you, but you're just no good. Please, Dad, I need that donut. You shut up and listen to me. When your ma died, I promised her I'd do everything I could for you. And I have. I treated you like you was my own son. I've given you a home. I've given you money. A lot of money. And what have you done with it? You've thrown it away to a slimy gambler named Tobich. But, Dad... For two months has been going on. For two months you've been bleeding me white to pay off that gambler. I told you to stay away from him, but you didn't. Now it's high time for me to meet him and tell him face to face to stay away from you. No, Dad, no, no. If you just give me the money this once more, I'll straighten out. I promise Your you. Your promises ain't worth a bill of straw. That's what you said last week. You'd straighten out. I told you then I'd give you just one week to do it, and if you didn't, you'd get no more money from me now or ever. Dad, you don't mean Oh, that. don't I? You got yourself into this mess. You get yourself out of it. Tovich can bluff you, but he can't bluff me. Dad, Dad. Huh? What's the matter? Window. Tovich, I just saw him at the window. Huh? Now he's gone. He's probably heading for the front door. All right, let him. Turn off the lights, Will. But, Dad... Turn them off. What are you doing? Get my gun. I'll give this Tobich a reception he ain't looking for. No, Dad, no. Uh, front door, huh? No, look, stay away from that door, Dad. Don't open it. Please don't. Uh, can't see a thing. Now, look, Will, you... Will. 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 
Chester Gentry lay dead at his own front door. Will immediately notified Sheriff Bennett's office. The sheriff requested help from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. He joined Sheriff Bennett at the Gentry Ranch. Well, it looks like an open and shut case, Jace. Kovich came here to get Will, but it was Chester who opened the door and collected the slugs instead. Where was the body, Sheriff? Lying right across the front doorway here. Hmm. How long ago did the shooting take place? Mm, a couple of hours ago. Chester notified me earlier in the evening he'd gotten a call from this Tovich. The call came from Biggerstown, so I went over there to see if I could find him. I located his rooming house, but he'd checked out. Looks like while I was there, he was here. You say Tovich had been bleeding Will and Chester for some time, huh? Yeah, about two months, according to what Chester told me on the phone. Well, let's talk to Will. Oh, oh, Sheriff, come on in. Uh, this is Ranger Pearson, Will. He'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Well, sure, Ranger. How long have you known this Tovich, Will? A couple of months, I guess. And where'd you first meet him? Pete's place, down the highway. That's a roadhouse, Chase. Mm, that where you did your gambling? No, no. Tovich would call me from time to time, tell me he had a game lined up. So I'd meet him at his rooming house in Biggest Town. Who else was in the games? A couple other fellas, different ones each time. I didn't know any of them. Didn't even know their names. You kept losing to Tovich, didn't you? Yeah, I did. But you kept on playing cards with him. Well, I, I kept thinking my luck would change. Your luck never changes when you're up against a professional gambler. Guess I know that now. It's too bad you didn't know it two months ago. Your stepfather might still be alive. Ranger, there just isn't a thing you can say to me that I haven't already said to myself. I've been sitting here for two hours thinking about it. Knowing if I had the guts to straighten out, this wouldn't happen. There's only one thing I hope right now. I hope somehow Dad knows how I feel. All right, Will. What does Tovich look like? Well, pretty ordinary-looking fellow. Kind you never notice in a crowd. About my height, I'd say. Black hair, regular features, nothing to really set him apart. Mm, that's pretty general. I guess it is, but it's the best I can do. Okay, better get some sleep. You find any tracks outside, Sheriff? Nope, my deputy scoured the yard, but it's too gravelly to hold any kind of tracks, car or foot. Will, do uh, you remember hearing a car pull away from here after the shooting? Why, no, Ranger. Now, come think of it, I, I didn't even hear one come up. Hmm. Okay. When it gets light, we'll ride around a little in the back of the ranch, Sheriff, and see if we can pick up any footprints. Right. In the meantime, let's take a run over to Biggerstown and talk to Tovich's landlady. Maybe she can give us a better line on him. I can't help you much on a description, Ranger. I only got a good look at Tovich once. That was when I rented this room to him two months ago. Mm, it's pretty strange that'd be the only time you saw him, Mrs. Packer. Well, he came and went by night. I'd hear voices in his room sometimes in the evening. A couple of times a woman's voice. But as far as seeing him around, I didn't. You said he checked out earlier tonight. Didn't you see him then? No. He just left an envelope under my door with his key and the money he owed on the room. You think you'd recognize him if you saw him again, Mrs. Packer? Well, I might. I don't know. But to sit down and describe him to you, I'm afraid I can't be much help there. I don't like it, Sheriff. Man's been living in this room for two months. Take a look around you. It's clean. Too clean. Nothing here to give us any line on. Hey, wait a minute. Have you cleaned this room since Tovich checked out? No. I ain't gotten around to it yet. I was figuring on giving it a good swamping out in the morning. I'd like to save you the trouble. What do you mean? I'd like to have one of our men from the lab vacuum the room for you. Well, <laughs> it's my back the way it is. I sure ain't going to say no. You figure on having the contents of the dust bag analyzed, Jase? Yeah. Tovich has covered his tracks pretty well so far, but... Maybe he doesn't know you can sometimes pick up a lot besides dust with a vacuum cleaner. Mrs. Packer, if you should ever see Tovich again, I'd like you to get in touch with me right away. Well, you can count on that, Ranger. Say, I don't hanker to have any killers running loose around my room in the house. Dust 
dawn came and the only thing new on the case was the publicity. The papers were carrying the story with pictures of Chester and Will. The sheriff and I started scouring the country in back of the gentry ranch on horseback. This is hunting weather, Jace, with all that frost on the ground. Yeah, so far the hunting hasn't been good. Let's see, we're right in line with the back of the ranch house now. Yeah, maybe we better split up and go around. Hey, whoa, oh, whoa, hold it. Whoa. Take a look on the ground there. Yeah, foot tracks. Coming from the back of the ranch house, too. And judging from the distance between the tracks, he was in a hurry. Come on. Heading straight north for the river, Jace. He could be trying for the New Mexico border. Could be. You know, one thing, it should be pretty easy to follow the tracks in the frost. Yeah. There's something funny about these tracks, though. What do you mean? I don't know yet. Can't just put my finger on it, but we'll keep trailing. See if we can put our finger on Tovich. Come on, Charcoal. Yeah. Can't understand why you don't want to cross the river, Jace. Cracks led smack into it back there. Uh, I know it, Sheriff, but let's just keep looking along the bank on this side. Okay, but he probably waded along a spell and kept going on the other side. What's on the other side? Santa Fe track, about 15 mile away. And what's between the river and the tracks? Just open country. That's what I mean. I don't think Tovich would risk 15 miles of open country. Yeah, see your point. Yeah, we'll keep looking along this side, then. Yeah, we don't have to look any farther, Sheriff. Look, there they are. Ooh, oh, oh. ooh, Charky. Hey, they... They sure are. Tracks coming up out of the river and heading back the way we came. But there's still one thing I don't understand. What's that? The shooting took place about 11.30 last night. Tovich could have been halfway across that open country on the other side of the river by dawn. Now, why'd he double back? I think I've got an answer for that, Sheriff. I told you a while back something was bothering me about those tracks. I finally figured out what it is. Oh? Look at the tracks, and then look at the hoof marks of our horses. Well, they look just about the same to me. Hey, they both cut down through the frost. Yeah, that's the point. What time you figure the frost formed on the ground this morning? Mm, between four and five, maybe. And those tracks were made after the frost formed. They cut through it. If they'd been made before the frost, it would have formed over them. Wait a minute. Maybe Tovich realized he killed the wrong man. Maybe he hid around the ranch trying for another crack at Will. And now those tracks are heading toward the ranch again. Come on, Sheriff. We better get back there in a hurry. <laughs> Followed the tracks back to the highway a mile below the ranch and lost them there. Then we headed for the ranch house. There was no sign of life around the place. I don't see Will outside anywhere. And his car's in the driveway. I hope we're not too late. Yeah. Will! Will! Oh, morning, Sheriff, Ranger. <sighs> well, that's a relief. Oh, come on in. Well, something the matter? We thought there might be. Can I use your phone? I want to call my office and see if there's anything new. Uh, help us out. Back in the hall. Okay, thanks. Ranger, what's the sheriff mean about being relieved to see me? Well, it's possible Tovich hung around here at the ranch last night after the shooting. What? You see or hear anything after we left? It wasn't my imagination. What do you mean? Well, after you fellas left, I locked up tight. About three or four this morning, a sound woke me up. What kind of a sound? Oh, like somebody walking around outside. You think it could have been Tovich? I don't know. Well, I've got Dad's gun. Tovich ever shows up around here again, I'll handle it. Law enforcing's our business, Will. Don't try and take it into your own hands. Yes. Yes, Sheriff. Now, what is it? My deputy just told me that landlady, Miss Packer, phoned the office for you about an hour ago. Mrs. Packer? Yeah, they told her to call out here. Will? Yeah. Did a Mrs. Packer phone me? Oh, uh... Woman phone didn't leave a name, but she did leave a number. I got it written down right here. Thanks. Operator, 2734J. How long ago did she call, Will? Oh, about an hour ago, I guess. she leave any message? No, no, just said to ask you to call her. 
You told her to get in touch with you if she ever saw Tovich again, Jace. Yeah, I know. Hmm. No answer. Come on, Sheriff. We better get over to Biggerstown and find out what's on Mrs. Packer's mind. She must have gone out. Her door's unlocked. Mrs. Packer? Mrs. Packer? Look, Jace. On the table there by the phone. Hmm. Newspaper. Folded to the story of the killing. Well, she can't have gone very far. Coffee's boiling on the hot plate. Hmm. Pot's just about boiled dry. Come on, let's take a look in the next room. You know, it's funny. She'd call and then be... Jace. On the bed. Yeah. Mrs. Packer. Strangled. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, Death in the Cards, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. We were getting nowhere fast on this case. First Chester Gentry, then Mrs. Packer. We questioned all the rumors, but none of them had seen a thing. Then we went back to the sheriff's office. Mm, Jace, there's no doubt about it at all. Miss Packer was trying to tell you something about Tovich, but he got to her first and killed her to shut her mouth. Yeah, we know who the killer is, all right, but the big question is, where is he? It's just like the earth opened and swallowed him up. Well, every sheriff's office in the state's been alerted. Highway patrol's on the lookout, too, so sooner or later we're bound to... Yeah. Excuse me, Jace. Mm. Sheriff Bennett speaking. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Your headquarters, Jace. Captain Stinson. Thanks. Hello, Captain. Just got a report from the lab on those vacuum sweepings you had them take from Tovich's room in Biggestown, Jace. Now, what'd they find? Only items of interest were two or three women's hairs. Red. Hmm. A lot of redheads in Texas, Captain. I'm afraid that's not much help. Maybe more than you think. This hair wasn't naturally red. It was a henna dye job. Judging from the distance between the roots and the dye, the lab figures it was dyed about a week ago. Well, now that's a horse of a different color. Well, thanks a lot, Captain. I'll keep you posted. Sheriff, we haven't had any luck finding Tovich, have we? We sure haven't. Okay, now we're going to start looking for Tovich's girl. His girl? How many beauty parlors do you figure there are in Biggerstown? I don't know, six or seven maybe. Before the day's over, we'll know exactly how many there are. We're going to visit them all. The sheriff had underestimated the town. There were ten of them. We had no luck on the first seven, and then just at dark, we hit number eight. There we found an operator who remembered giving a henna dye job to a girl named Thelma Parrish about a week ago. We learned that Thelma was a waitress in a coffee shop, so I parked my car around the corner and we dropped in on her. Well, you men look like you could use a nice cup of coffee. Nothing I'd like better right now than having a pretty red-headed waitress pour me one, ma'am. <laughs> Why, thank you, Ranger. Coming up. What do you think, Jace? I think maybe. Cream? Uh, black, please. Yeah, black here, too. Well, here you are. Thanks. Hey, uh, seen your boyfriend lately? Boyfriend? Tovich. Who? Tovich. You must have me mixed up with somebody else, Ranger. I don't know anybody by that name. Are you real sure about that, ma'am? Well, of course I am. A girl's sure who she does know and who she doesn't. Well, either I'm mistaken or you're lying to me. Look, I don't know what this is all about, but I do know better than lie to a Ranger. I hope so. Well, come on, Sheriff. We better be getting back to your office. Okay, Jason. Here's for the coffee. Thanks, Sorry, I can't help you any about what's his name. So am I. Hmm. 
This way, Sheriff. Where are we going? Across the street. Yeah, but the car's on this side, around the corner. Keep walking. She's watching us from inside. Oh. Think she was lying? That's what I want to find out. Well, she seemed pretty sure of herself. Okay, we're out of her line of sight now. Let's get in this doorway, quick. Good. Yeah, we're in the shadows here. She can't spot us from across the street. Now we'll just keep an eye on the front of that coffee shop Chase, and... look. She's coming outside. Uh-huh. Yeah. False alarm. She's just washing the windows. Yeah? Well, that's the fastest wash job I've ever seen. She's heading inside again. She came out to make sure we'd gone. Come on. We'll work away along the sidewalk until we can see across the street into the coffee shop. Yeah, but she may spot us. Hey, hold her. She's on the phone with her back to us. She was lying, all right. Probably calling Tovich right now. Sheriff, how about slipping into the drugstore and tracing that call? Mm -hmm. I can keep an eye on the front of the shop from my car. I'll meet you there. The sheriff disappeared into the drugstore. I waited in my car. A couple of minutes later, he came over and got in wearing a very puzzled look. Uh, must be some mistake, Jason. Yeah, what do you mean? That waitress, she just telephoned the Gentry Ranch. I don't think there is any mistake, Sheriff. And right now, it doesn't surprise me much. Yeah, but as far as we know, the only one at the Gentry Ranch is Will. Yeah, but Will's going to have company as soon as we can make it there. Wait a minute. You trying to say that Will Gentry... Sheriff, it looks like there is no Tovich and never has been. I guess the boy we've been up against right from the start is Will Gentry. I radioed KTXA to set up a roadblock on the highway 10 miles each way from the Gentry Ranch in case Will should take off before we could get there. And I jammed the gas pedal to the floor and held it there. We'll relay information. Jace, you're leaving me way behind. Will Gentry. Looks like I was way behind for a while, too. But looking back on it, it all falls into place. We know Will was always after money from his stepfather, Chester. And he invented the story about a gambler named Tovich as an excuse to get that money? He even went so far as to rent a room in Biggerstown under that name. But when Chester cracked down and threatened to disinherit him, Will used the same Tovich device to kill Chester. That way, he'd get all Chester's money. So when Chester opened the front door thinking Tovich was outside, there wasn't anybody there at all. And it was Will who plugged him. Unit 10, go ahead, KTXA. Unit 320, station at Tucker's Junction. Unit 256, station at Biggerstown, turn off. Unit 10, 10-4. KTXA, clear. Well, we got the roadblock set up. Tucker's Junction's about five miles the other side of the Gentry Ranch, isn't it? Yep. And with another highway patrol car back of us at the Biggerstown turn off, looks like we got Will bottled up tight if he makes a run for it. There's no side roads off the highway for six or seven miles along here. Good. As soon as we get the top of this rise, we ought to be able to spot the Gentry Ranch. Yeah, ranch house only a mile or so from here, Jace. It was Will who made those tracks in the frost then, huh? He heard me say we'd start trailing in the morning. I guess he figured on giving us something to trail. Yeah, and that explains Miss Packer's murder, too. She must have seen Will's picture in the paper, recognized him as Tovich, so she tried to phone you. And when she called the ranch house, Will knew he had to shut her mouth for keeps. He probably got back from killing her just before we showed up at the ranch house after the trailing. There's the ranch house, only a half mile more. Now wait, the taillight's swinging out onto the highway. He's making a run for it. What kind of cars he drive? Gray sedan, isn't it? Yep. Unit 10 to all units and roadblock. Subject, Will Gentry, attempting getaway. Proceeding east on Highway 19 in Gray sedan. Unit 10 pursuing. Unit 203 to Unit 10. Unit 10... Go ahead, Unit 203. Unit 203 on Highway 19, three miles west of Tucker's Junction. That's only a couple of miles east of us, Jace. Proceed west on Highway 19, Unit 203. Unit 203, 10-4. Unit 10, clear. Yeah, we got him bottled up for sure, Jace. We're backstopped at both ends, and we're coming at him from both ends. It's a squeeze play. I sure hope so. Unit 10 to Unit 203. Have you sighted Gentry's car yet? Not yet, Unit 10. We'll report contact. Unit 10, clear. I don't get it, Sheriff. We should have spotted Gentry by this time. We're almost together. Here, watch it, Chase. Sharp bend in the road just ahead. Just past this drive-in movie here. Yeah, I see it. 
The only way Gentry could get off the highway is to ditch his car, and I don't think he'd do that. Hey, a red light coming at us. That must be Unit 203. He's stopping, too. But where's Will? No sign of Gentry? None, Jake. No, but there aren't any side roads at all. He couldn't have vanished into thin air. Hey, wait a minute. That drive-in movie we just passed. You think he turned in? It's the only place he could have turned in. Come on. We went back to the drive-in theater, stationed the highway patrol car at the exit, then the sheriff and I talked to the theater manager. He remembered a gray sedan pulling in there a few minutes before. He'd sent it to the rear aisle, so the three of us circled around the theater on the outside of the fence and then came in through a small gate in the rear. But Gentry's car wasn't in the back row. But he's got to be in this back row, Ranger. That's where I sent him. Look, there's a vacant spot in the row. One in the next row ahead. He could have wormed his way forward a few rows. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people do that trying to get a better spot. About 200 cars in here. It's going to be like looking for a needle. Hey, hold it. Three aisles up, near the side. Yeah, that's his car, all right. Going to take him now, Jason? I can't. There's too many cars around him. It's a cinch he won't come peacefully. Somebody might get shot. If we could only get the car on each side of him to get clear... I could make an announcement on the public address. No, that's no good. He'd probably start shooting. I can't warn the car on each side. Will would spot me. Same goes for you, Sheriff. Want me to do it? You? Oh, I don't know. It'd be pretty... Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, I think I got it. You go up to the car on this side of Will. Tell him to clear out in exactly one minute. Then go to Will's car. Tell him you're checking the reception on those speakers they hang on the side of their cars. And then go to the car the other side of him. Tell them to clear out in two minutes. Good idea. That way, maybe Will won't get suspicious. Thirty seconds after the second car leaves, turn on all the lights. Okay. I'll give it a whirl. See you after it's all over. I hope. Watched the manager go along the line of cars. He worked his way to Will's car, then passed it to the one beyond. Then he headed for the projection booth. So far, so good. Seconds ticked by. At the end of the first minute, the car this side of Will pulled out. Another minute went by. And the car the other side of Will got going. He's out in the open now, Jason. Yeah. Twenty seconds till the lights go on. Come on. John, you came to the and we'll get just a little closer. I'll take him from this side. Hey, Jace. He's starting up. He must have got suspicious. He won't get far. You hit a car. Will! Come out of that car with your hands in the air. There go the lights, Tom. That's coming out all right, Ranger. Look out, Jace! Oh. Come on, Sheriff. You okay, Jace? Oh. Yeah. Hey, you sure knocked him down, Tom. Oh. Uh, hit him in the shoulder. Why didn't you finish me off? <laughs> That's up to the state of Texas, Will, not me. But I think they'll oblige you, all right. Will Gentry was tried and convicted of the murders of Chester Gentry and Leona Packer. On the morning of April 12th, 1948... He was executed in the electric chair at Huntsville Penitentiary. And here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae, with another interesting story about the Texas Rangers. Although the Texas Rangers is a highly organized law enforcement agency, the men themselves are rugged individualists. One ranger in particular that I know of carries his six shooters with only five shells in each gun. One day he was asked why he did this. If the hammer's resting on an empty chamber, he said, the gun can't be fired accidentally. But, said his interested friend, with only five bullets instead of six in the gun, aren't you endangering your own position? Maybe so, he said with a grin, but if you can't hit your target with five shells, the sixth one won't do you much good anyhow. Good night, folks. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers.
Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Bill Johnstone, Farley Bear, Jeanette Nolan, Byron Kane, Mike Barrett, and Ernie Newton. This story was transcribed and adapted by Bob Reif, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Remember all the delightful troubles that beset Mr. Blandings when he built his dream house? Well, starting next Sunday afternoon, you can hear the further adventures of the beleaguered Mr. Blandings and his wonderful wife, Muriel. It's top listening for the entire family next Sunday and Sundays thereafter when Cary Grant and Betsy Drake star as Mr. and Mrs. Blandings. Stay tuned for the $64 question. Tomorrow, hear the symphony on NBC. Welcome back. Well, I was kind of clued into the solution to this case early based on things like the uh, description that was provided by Will and then the landlady's account that the lodger didn't hang about the uh, apartment much, which indicated that it was rented to establish the existence of the identity but that the person wasn't there themselves. The one thing that they didn't explain, and which I really think needed some explanation, was the trajectory, because essentially the son was in there with his stepfather, I guess, and we were led to believe the bullet was fired from outside. And certainly if it was fired from inside the house... Uh, that would have been something that the Rangers uh, picked up before they got into things like, you know, going to all the hair salons in town. But for whatever reason, they decided to emphasize these other aspects of the investigation, which, to be fair, are interesting to see how they played out. Also, we got a country fied saying where the victim said that uh, his promises were not worth, it was either a bed of straw or a bale of straw. I thought it was bale, but the second time I listened to it was bed. It appears that the axiom that it's based on is not worth a straw. I don't know if the saying got further country fied or turned into something else. Or if that was embellished at all by the writers. I do wonder if adding that kind of hurts the saying because a bale of straw is worth something. You know, it's used for bedding for animals. It can even be used for feed. It's not particularly nutritious. It can be used for decoration. So it's not totally worthless like, you know, in the saying that's not worth a straw. On the other hand, it is $3. You can get a bale of straw at Joanne Fabric for $3.99. So if you told me my promise was worth $3.99, I think I would be a little bit insulted. At any rate, it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to thank Jennifer. Jennifer's been one of our Patreon supporters since November 2019, currently supporting the show at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Jennifer. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Saturday with another episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers, but coming up on Monday, we'll have another episode of Casey Crime Photographer, where... Night. In his rather untidy bachelor apartment, Casey slumps comfortably in an ancient, overstuffed chair... Reading a popular mystery story. Oh, just when I'm about to find out who's done it. Hello. Hey, Casey. Yeah? What's the time? Do you got to work tonight? Well, 12 o'clock. I'm on the lobster shift this week. Who is it? Then in about half an hour from now, you'll start walking toward the garage where you keep your car. Yeah? Don't do it. Don't do it? If you do, you'll be killed. Huh? Killed, I said. Men are watching your apartment house now, waiting for you to come out. Call the police and tell them to get those men. Yeah, who are you? Never mind that. Phone the police and don't leave. Now, look here. I can't I talk tell... anymore. Goodbye. Hey. hey. Huh. Oh, 
nuts. It's just a gag. Hmm. Hmm. Homicide Bureau, Captain Logan. This is Casey, pal. Oh? Hey, look, I, I'm probably wasting your time, pal, but I, I just got a screwy phone call that might be on the level. Screwy phone call? Yeah, now, if this turns out to be somebody's idea of a practical joke, I know how you'll use the needle, Logan, but uh, <clears throat> a gal just phoned me. I didn't recognize her voice, and she wouldn't give her name, but here's what she... I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.